I recently said you to a highly paying client. Yes, that's a true story. Well, uh, actually, in my freelancing career, which is quite short, I would say, because it's only about two years and a half that I'm a freelancing, so I definitely had to say no to this client. Unfortunately, after starting uh, with them, right? Why this? Because I had a really awkward relationship and uh, communication with him. Uh, we had only a first, I would say, kickoff meeting at the beginning just to explain a little bit the context and the application that we had to do, which was really good. And I selected because I wanted this in my portfolio. Yes, I did. The wrong choice. Yes. Was cool was a really cool project in the blockchain and blah, 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 all this uh, fancy things, but was really promising. So I, I said, yeah, okay, let's do it. And I have been introduced by a friend of mine that was working already with him. And so what happened is that the only way to communicate with him was, well, via Figma comments. Hundred of them, really, seriously. And so basically every morning I woke up basically and spent like two to three hours of my time going through all the Figma comments. And also the only other way of communication was via basically a board of tasks uh, full of things to do without any prioritization. And so basically most of the time I spent with this client was only understanding what he wanted to do. I asked him several times to have meetings, but he never wanted to. What is this? This is a red flag. And so let's talk now about red flags. What are the red flags? Well, are the things that let you understand when a client is not actually a fit for you, right? And knowing this early in, in the project, can make the difference, can definitely um, save you a lot of stress, headaches down the line. And here I'm going to list actually three uh, red flags that are really common to understand when a client is not a right fit. The first one is if a potential client is haggling, I would say, from the beginning on your project rate or on your hourly rate or daily rate, whatever kind of rate we are talking about, well, this is already, um, uh, I would say, good point where you have to, you know, understand that something is wrong, right? This might indicate that the client doesn't really value your work or doesn't really understand the potential uh, of the standards of, of your industry. As a second point is pay attention to the communication style. And that was the point that made me decide actually to leave this client and drop this client uh, because of this, this thing. For me, it was not possible to understand the communication style before starting the project, actually, because we had the first kick of meeting. It was, I would say, uh, quite good. But uh, at the end, we didn't have a real uh, communication. So pay attention to communication. One of the things that might, you know, um, let you understand that something is wrong is like if the client takes weeks or you know too much time in the time frame that you have uh, to respond right this might indicate that they don't fully value your time maybe or they don't have give priorities on 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 the project or on the opposite side is when they are too obsessed to um to comment i would say they have always uh, something to say on everything you do it's not that you don't have to give uh, give feedback because feedback are really important and are really valuable uh, but is how the clients give you these feedbacks 
right? So it's really important to, to do this. And this is also obviously related to communication, right? So it's how you communicate with your clients, which is really, really important. Really important, but really important, okay? Third point is watch always out from unrealistic deadlines. So if you probably know that a project of three months, uh, the clients want it in three weeks, well, uh, that's a real problem, right? And it's clear sign, it's a clear sign that they might not have realistic uh, expectations, right? And so it's important also to understand this and, uh, you know, either, you know, let the client understand that this is an unrealistic deadlines and that you need much more time. But usually when you say this uh, at the beginning, it already seems like you want to pick them some more money and work more with them and takes, you know, uh, more time just to uh, do whatever you want and being paid, which most of the time is not true at all, right? Because if you need three months to do something, it's because you probably need three months to do something. But you always have to, I would say, uh, watch out for this unrealistic uh, deadlines. So now moving on, on, I would say per perhaps one of the most important skills that you have absolutely to learn in client management, which is how to say no professionally. So even if your client is an asshole, okay, and uh, treats you as a shit, okay, it's always, always important to say no in a professional way, right? So not, don't, don't just, you know, be angry with him and just fuck him off, right? That's not the, the way you should do it, okay? So always be polite in a way. So the first suggestion that I want to say is uh, that it is important really to be clear and direct. Uh, yet courteous, I would say, right, with your clients. So you might say something like, uh, thank you for considering me for this project. After reviewing uh, the details, I have realized that uh, it's not within my scope of what I'm currently focusing on, but I appreciate the opportunity. Second point, which is uh, also really important, is to provide an alternative. So if you think that your client, that the client is not a good fit for you, for this, you know, red flags that you realized before, well, try to, um, you know, suggest a better fit. Uh, sometimes you have colleagues in your network, some, someone that is more skilled in something, that is more close, I would say with the client's needs and uh, uh, client's goals. So why not? I mean, you should be um, able to give them responsibly an alternative. This shows goodwill and uh, maintains good relationship, which is really good too, even if, a, if the client is, is an asshole, right? And finally, the third point is always, I would say, reinforce their professional boundaries. So you might always add something like, um, you know, uh, I choose to do this uh, because this will ensure that you get the best result in the time you need, for example, something like this, right? And let's talk about how to, I would say, create a, a system that lets you screen your clients. So it's really important sometimes to, um, I would say, set up your own screening process. Because yeah, the client is giving you an opportunity, but again, we have to understand if the opportunity fits with us and with our goals, right? So what you want to do and you have to do, in my opinion, is to create a sort of screening process, again, uh, for the clients to help you filter out Again, the clients who might not be a good fit for your goals and your achievement, etc., uh, etc. Et so, implementing, I would say, a few strategic steps upfront can definitely change the game for your, you know, professional career. So, the first thing 
and what I would like to suggest is like to consider obviously a first uh, initial consultation. So the first initial consultation should be uh, an opportunity um, not only to uh, discuss about the, the project but also to uh, understand the expectation of the of the clients they are interviewing you to understand if you have the skill but you also want to understand him how he communicate what is their their deadlines with your what is the um you know their their goals etc etc so it's really important first thing is to do this initial consultation so second point is create a client questionnaire right this can definitely help you to you know be prepared for the for the um, uh, for the initial consultation and to ask the right question so that you can really understand from the get go of a project um, if the client is a good fit for you or no you can create a questionnaire with some even basic question like uh, what are your main goals uh, for the project or um, what is the deadline for this project. Again, this questionnaire can reveal a lot about your client and their expe expectation and prioritization on the project. Finally, also really, really important is setting clear expectation to the client is crucial. From the get-go, so from the beginning, you have to uh, be clear with the client on the working working terms and condition, I would say, your availability for the project and uh, what you need from them to be successful in the project and uh, to have a successful relationship with them. So it's really, really important to uh, meet all these terms so that you can um, you know work in a good environment in a happy environment you can create a good relationship with the clients and so this good relationship will definitely help you with other clients because if a client is happy they will definitely suggest you to other you know people or other uh, potential clients that will call you because they know that you work well and you are adaptable etc etc so or your maybe quality that you have right and so to wrap up what to say first thing is actually to understand what are your red flags to choose yes or no a client second point is to understand how to say no professionally to a client and third point is try to create your screening process for your client a questionnaire or whatever you want to to being able to select your client more carefully and so that's it for this video i hope you enjoyed it so if you like this kind of video please give a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel activate the bell and see you in the next one bye Thank you.